Hello guys, Guru here. If you're new to the channel or enjoy the content, feel free to subscribe and stay tuned for more top-notch podcast reviews of your favorite series. Peace. What's up people, it's the Guru and welcome to Geek Yogurt. Today's topic, The Walking Dead, Season 7, Episode 10, let's go. Uh, the title of this episode was uh, New Best Friends. All right. <sighs> Where do we get on this one, guys? Where do we begin? It was kind of a weird episode to me. And uh, I, I, go, so I, want to go, I want to go, I don't know how I feel about it. I do know how I feel about it. I didn't really like this episode, guys. This is, um, I'll say, uh, a good maybe 75% of this episode was just filler. It was a waste, a waste of an episode. We could have covered a lot more material on this one. Um, we saw a good little dialogue between Daryl and Carol. That was good to see. Um, you know, I'm a big time Carol fan. And, you know, everybody loves, loves Daryl. So that was good to see that dialogue. Um, I've got the guy's name that was going to actually sacrifice Carol to start a war with the saviors because he you know Ezekiel needs a little push in order for him to change his mind uh, uh to go against the treaty he has with those guys and <laughs> what daryl uh daryl was hardcore man what daryl said i don't care if she gets struck by lightning if anything happens to carol <laughs> i'm gonna kill you <laughs> i love that man daryl's a cool guy man i love that scene but <sighs> guys Everything else is pretty whack, man. Even that fight between uh, Rick and that armored walker. That was a chick named J Jadis, Jadis, whatever her name was, of the scavengers. She set up this fight where he had to prove his worth in order to see if uh, she would be some consider being willing to join in with the fight against uh, Negan. So, it was a whack fight. Uh, like I said, in the end, we know Rick Rick's got plot armor. He's not going to get killed. So it was like no real danger. So of course that always takes away from it would have been better for another member of it would have been it would have made more sense to me if they'd have put another member of a uh, Rick's crew inside of there. So it could have been a chance. Okay, there might be a chance this character might die. Especially if it was uh, I think his name's Adam, the, the the gay guy. Like especially him. Like if he'd have got put in there or even uh, the the lesbian chick or um, even Rosita, I would like to see her. Hell, you could have put um, Michonne in there. But Rick, we know it was no way in hell Rick was going to die. So, so I kind of took away from the fight. And then if y'all ever, did y'all look at the uh, certain parts of the special effects? Well, I was about to say CGI. But when they were standing on a pile of trash, you could tell that whole scene was just so fake. I mean, it was... It was very poorly done. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure I hate to see this turn from a review to a rant. I mean, I, I I did not like this episode, guy. I can't lie, I did not like this episode. And then um, even though that whole explanation of how uh, Gabriel got captured, they just snuck inside the gates. You know, you know, we got they got security in Alexander, and he just got you know taken. He took all the food and everything, and just drove off. So everybody with the theory that there was somebody inside that car with Gabriel. There was facts. A lot of people jumped the gun and blamed Gabriel, uh, said Gabriel was a traitor and he was going to be the traitor. We turned out, and I knew he wasn't because, you know, he left a clue. What kind of traitor leaves a clue of where he's going or something? You know, he left the Bible and the, he wrote something in the Bible I forgot. So I kind of knew he wasn't a traitor, but I was on Facebook and everybody was claiming they were hating Gabriel and they he was like the new Lori as far as the, how much hate they had for him. I was like, damn, man, the guy, you don't even, you know, he had a chance to prove his innocence of why he did what he, he did. So now we know. And, uh, but this little group of what they call the, um, the scavengers, this is a weird group. It's like, they're almost like, uh, <laughs> uh, the Hills Have Eyes type of guys. They look like they kind of mutated or something, man. Like, so there's a lot of tall ass dudes and tall ass women that look like dudes and, uh, they acting all weird. Uh, it was just kind of that was just a weird ass group, guys. At first, I did thought they were um the Oceanside chicks, but I see now I, I stand corrected. There was some guys in that group. Um, it was just 
It was just weird, man. It's just a weird, weird episode. I, I just can not I couldn't get jiggy with it, you know. Uh, we, we, of course, we see that they're gonna form a, they got a so-called alliance, but Rick got to come up with the guns. Yeah, the. Oh man, Michonne. I'm gonna do a rant on Michonne sooner or later. Michonne just. <sighs> yeah, so I'm loving Rosita. I love a little spiciness, Rosita. Uh, we need more Sasha. We miss Carl. Where's Coral? You know, you know, it's not a, to me. It's not a. It's not a Walking Dead episode without any Coral in it. So no Carl, but had Coral, <laughs> Carol. <laughs> That's my girl. She was in it. And uh, we still see she got that same soft spot for Daryl, man. You know, like usually she can carry everybody out the house, but when Daryl comes by, she feeds him, is willing to sit down and have long talks with him and everything. So their friendship is uh is very good to see. Now, to me, that was the bright light of this whole episode, and we see that he had to lie to her because he knew, like everybody knew, even Morgan said, if he told her what really happened with Glenn and Abraham, she's gonna come and try to fight back, and she's trying to get away from all this killing and um in a way she's almost like adapted the mentality of ideology of morgan with um, him being uh all life is precious i don't think she sees it as that way she just sees it as she's just tired of the blood on her hands you know she's tired of having to kill and she's like if i be around these people i'm going to kill to protect them so to keep her suffering was going down this bloody path she has to stay away from the people she loves, so she kind of like sacrificing herself. Well, I mean, you know, uh, being away from your loved ones and uh, ostracizing yourself for your sanity's sake, you know. So it's it's, it's pretty noble, you know, and um, and it's kind of noble to see that Daryl lied to her. So we gonna see how that's gonna come about, like what's gonna happen when she finds out the truth with Daryl uh, being about what really happened to Glenn and Abraham. And uh, the rest of some of the other folks at um, Alexandria that died. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. And uh, we see the, the, the tensions. Yo, what about that guy that was, uh, came to the, the, do the pickup from King Ezekiel? He's very tolerant to be a savior, you know, because he could have easily. He seemed like the kind of guy that's like, oh, man, my job. Ugh. Can y'all guys cut this shit? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I like his character, man. He's, he's one of the cooler savers. He's probably the only cooler, uh, cool savior there is, but the other guy's a jerk. You know, give me your gun and all the stick. He took Morgan's stick. Uh, he got knocked on his ass again, so that guy's a hothead. He's going way too far. But um, I know in the end, he's going to get a bad death. I can see it coming. It's going to be horrible. It's going to be painful. And he's going to deserve it, of course. And... I thought Morgan was going to actually flip out because the guy took his stick, you know, and uh, bust him inside the head with it, which he should have because Morgan's pissing me off for real uh, a lot. Hey, I hate to say it, man. All the black characters right now are pissing me off, man. Like, what the hell is going on, man? Everybody. Uh, Ezekiel, he, uh, Bashon, fucking Morgan. I don't know what's going on, man. It is. <laughs> Step y'all game up, man. Hey, hey, Gabriel did his thing. Gabriel pulled a knife on that damn crazy ass um scavenger chick. <laughs> Go Gabriel. Everybody was hating on his ass. But um he, he, he used to be a sucker, you know, but now he's doing alright. But yo, man, that's how about it, guys. I did not like this episode. I guess y'all could tell by all the complaints. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. You can't like them all, man. But this this was a uh, a bad one and uh it seemed almost comical at points it's like the way this chick is playing a part was it jadis jadis whatever it is she's a it's, i don't know man it just didn't work well with me and the way they, even when they were negotiating the look on her face the acting between her and rick was weird then he goes out smiling he's all stabbed up from fighting that armored uh walker and uh, <laughs> I wasn't feeling this for guys, man. Um, but hopefully next week's gonna be better. And once again, uh, another boneheaded move by Daryl. You know, Rick told him to stay there in the kingdom. He was safer there. What does he do? Nah, I'm leaving and walking back to the um, what Gregory's uh, spot. What the fuck's that called? Uh, is that the hilltop? Hilltop. Where they they get raided all the time by um the saviors or whatever. So and we know Gregory's a bitch. So Gregory telling you. So why are you going back to a place 
where you got the most dangerous. At least they were trying to hide you in Alexandria. You was the safest place was for you in the kingdom, but you'll go back to the hilltop. I'm like, gee. <laughs> oh man, but hey, you gotta make the story progress, so it's, it's cool. he's gonna get us up into some kind of trouble, so hey, we need the excitement, especially after an episode like this one, man, guys, but um, yep. That's the guru. Tell me what y'all thought of this episode in the comments section. And uh, don't forget to like and share and all that good stuff.